In this video, we're going to look at how to sync external devices with Sonar, both using Sonar as the master device and as the slave. A quick look at the ways of controlling other devices. There are three methods that we can use with Sonar. They are MMC, MIDI Sync and MTC. MMC or MIDI Machine Control is the more simple of the three and simply sends control messages such as start, stop, record and other events such as punch in, punch out points to external devices. How many of these are recognized will depend on your device and how much of the following here works for you will depend on that. It's probably a good idea to pull out the device's manual and read the relevant sections there. To set up MMC, we need to change the clock source to SMPT MTC. That's changed here. And then we switch to the project MIDI page and check the transmit MMC option. MIDI machine control can be used in conjunction with MIDI timecode. For example, MIDI machine control is sent to an external device that is transmitting MIDI timecode to Sonar with Sonar as the slave. In that scenario, Sonar's transport controls effectively become remote controls for the external master device. You need to set the ID number of that master device here. Let's switch back to the clock settings again. Now let's look at MIDI sync. This can be used to sync Sonar with external equipment such as sequences or drum machines and either the external device or Sonar can be the master device. Let's look at Sonar as the master first. If you just want to control external devices from Sonar such as start drum machines or sequences, there's no need to change the clock settings, they can be left on audio. Open the Preferences Project MIDI page and then check the Transmit MIDI Start Continue Stop Clock option. Beneath that, set the options. These are dependent on whether the external device supports them or not. Use Start Never Continue will be greyed out unless the previous transmit option is selected. If you choose this, Sonar will only transmit MIDI start messages every time it restarts, even in the middle of a song. Transmit MIDI Song Position Pointer causes Sonar to send a position message before starting or continuing playback. The Locate Delay for Song Pointer Position Receipt is only active if the Transmit SPP option is checked. Some older MIDI devices take a small amount of time to respond to the message. This option causes Sonar to wait briefly after sending it in order to give the slave device time to respond. The delay is in eighteenths of a second. Enter the delay you need, for example, 18 for a full second delay. Beneath that is where we check the devices we want to send MIDI sync to. As you can see, multiple ports are supported and I have two drum machines that I use and I check them as required. We can control whether MIDI sync is on or off via the MIDI sync module, which we'll look at again shortly. Or you can map it to a button to the MIDI sync command. That way you can control it from a control surface. I've now got my MRT3 checked, so if I click OK and start Sonar's playback, my drum machine will start. Let's get back to preferences by pressing P. It's also possible to set up Sonar as the slave. For example, if I press the play button on one of my drum machines, that can start Sonar recording. The first thing to do is configure the external device to send MIDI sync. You'll need to consult your device manual on how to do that. Then we need to change the clock settings to MIDI sync within Sonar. And this is done from the preferences, selecting the clock again, or it's possible to choose it from the MIDI sync control bar module. Now when I click on OK, I arm a track within Sonar and press the record button. Sonar waits for the signal and clock from the external device. This is indicated in the transport modules information area and to cancel that command, you can press the escape key. If I press play on the external device, the device will start to play and Sonar will record. If there's any audio in the project, it will play back, but may not be in time. 
MIDI sync is especially useful with drum machines. You can set up patterns within the machine or use presets and record them back into Sona for further editing. You could do that without MIDI sync, of course, but then you'd need to manually line up timing, whereas using MIDI sync with a drum machine controls that for you. Let's get back to preferences. Now, there is another method of synchronization, and Sona can again be master or slave. Similar to MIDI sync, MIDI timecode can be sent to multiple ports at once. It may appear at first that MIDI sync and MIDI timecode are very similar, but it's more powerful and it uses a different method to control timing. Rather than a clock controlling the timing, it is a code that indicates not only position in a project, but also how fast that project should be playing back. For example, it is the code used on tape machines. A signal is recorded onto the tape via a timecode generator, and this code is used for location and timing with other devices. Sona can generate this code as well. If Sona is to be set to the master device, setup is similar to MIDI sync. The clock stays at internal or audio, and in preferences project MIDI, check the transmit MTC box. You also need to check any devices that you want to send MIDI timecode to. You can also set the required frame rate here. Your external device needs to be set to respond to MIDI timecode, and you'll need to consult its manual on how to do that. If a project is using MIDI timecode sync, Sona will set the zero position marker at the start of bar one. Of course, material on an external tape, for example, probably doesn't start exactly at zero, and if it doesn't, you can set the required offset using the offset field in preferences project clock. This is the same page we looked at earlier, and the offset is at the bottom. Now let's look at setting up Sonar as a slave. To set Sonar up as a slave, we first set the clock source to MIDI timecode in the preferences here. Then we need to switch to preferences, audio, sync and caching. We set here how Sonar responds when it detects incoming code. The ask first option will prompt you and ask you if you want to switch to the timecode. If you answer yes, Sona switches the clock source and starts to use the signal. Always switch is similar, but there is no prompt. The clock source changes happen automatically. Do not switch source but start if in MTC mode means that Sona will not respond to MIDI timecode at all unless the clock source is already set to MIDI timecode. The never switch source option is there if you never want to sync to MTC from external equipment. This next option tells Sona what to do when you press play in SMPTE MIDI timecode or MIDI sync mode. The switch current clock source and start playback option switches the clock to audio and starts playback. This cancels the existing sync mode. Maintain current clock source and wait for time code will not switch the clock, ensuring Sona stays in the chosen sync mode and then waits for the SMPTE code or sync signal. The playback button remains depressed. These two options control how audio is synced to the incoming MIDI data. If you use the trigger and freewheel option, audio playback starts at the exact time code, but then the audio plays at its own internal rate. Be aware that using this option, the audio can gradually drift away from SMPTE time due to variations in the timecode signal. This works best if your sound card is receiving a word clock signal. Full chase lock. With this option, the speed of audio playback is continuously adjusted to stay within the timecode. You can use this timing offset option to make fine adjustments. Both negative and positive values can be used. The sync module in the control bar allows us access to the synchronization settings we've just looked at. The drop down at the top allows us to select the various timecode formats. And the display beneath that will show the current time of any incoming timecode. The sync type shows where the clock source is currently coming from and can be changed from here as well. And quick access to the preferences we looked at earlier can be achieved by right-clicking this button. The next button turns MIDI sync on or off. Remember the timing info can be sent on multiple MIDI ports, 
and you'll need to check the ports you want to transmit MIDI sync to in preferences as we saw earlier. The transmit MTC sync button turns the MTC timecode transmission on or off. Again, multiple ports can be used and they need to be checked in the preferences dialog we saw earlier. <laughs> 